Hello, listeners, and welcome to the Known and Never podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Bromley, and we are back after a little bit of a hiatus. Oh, my hair's all getting stuck in the microphone. I'm sorry, listeners. Um, we're back after a little hiatus for the international break, and we are having a bit of a conversation around the manager, Scott Parker, under some pressure at Burnley after a disappointing run of results and a a significant lack of goals in the squad. I sit down this week with Tom and Adam from our usual panellists and we have a look at what the future holds for Scott Parker and this Burnley campaign. Buckle up listeners, let's go. Gentlemen, another episode. Adam, how are you? We've not had you on for a while. Yeah, very well, thank you. As for the YouTube viewers might be able to see, um, I've got a background change. We've got a new arrival. Um, so the spare room is now young Penny, Penelope Violet, but we can call her Penelope Clarity if we want for this. I was going to uh, say, was this, was this a conversation you might have had with Mrs D where you said, can we call her Penelope Clarity? And she said, no, we'll have a conversation. Is that how that um, went? Yeah, I know be- better than to ask that question anymore. I'm not as brave as Rich. This is like your third child, isn't it? You're a pro at this. You think you get braver after your first. Actually, she she yeah. doesn't care anymore. She's like, yeah, fine, whatever. <laughs> Get it done. Um, I do like the fact that, that baby's room has got, albeit a, a slightly girly fight, but it has got a bit of a claret and blue theme. I do like it. Well played, sir. Well played. Nothing um, well, it's great. To do with me. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's very good to have you back. We're, we're very happy. And Thank of you. course, Tom. Now, Tom, you're looking remarkable considering that you're not rich. But I'm not rich, what monetarily or the, the place well, in the gym. Either as you're not Richard. <laughs> like not we, we were expecting Rich <laughs> Steele this evening, but he also has baby problems. This is what happens with the non and every podcast. You've all gone and got yourselves children, and it's it's messing with our schedule. Stop that. Stop that now. Uh, it is, but yeah, poor poor little baby Steele is poorly this evening. So lots of love, little baby, little Freya Steele is feeling all all poorly. So get get well soon. And we are replaced, of course, by the man himself, Tom Claret, who's also on. Because why on earth were you going tonight? You were going to some ridiculous seventh tier game, weren't you? What 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 was that? Yeah, it would have been uh, Nicolai versus Macclesfield. It would have been a big game for my local team, but sadly the snow's put paid to that. No games on anywhere tonight, so you've got the rarity of me on a Tuesday night form. I like it. I do like it. We had snow as well here on the course, which is quite rare, so I knew it was going to be bad. Um, gentlemen, let's, you know, we've caught up now. Our listeners have, have got themselves um, happily up to date with the diaries of, of Team None and Ever, so we can talk on to more impressing matters. Um, we have talked at length of the analysis show over the past few weeks about the team, about the lack of goals, about the troubles, the change in personnel and what we need to do. So we thought we'd come at this from a slightly different angle. Um Listen, listeners, this is not a doom episode. This is going to be a very balanced analysis, and I think you'd hope you'd expect from this from now. But I think we can't ignore the questions that are being asked of our current manager. There is significant unrest amongst certain parts of our fan base that Scott Parker may not be the man to lead us forward. There's already calls for him to be sacked. Premature, in my view, but that's that's my own opinion. Um and that drastic changes need to happen because we are literally nowhere near where we need to be in terms of a credible promotion chase. And actually, on top of that, the football is really, really terrible. Um, pressure is always on a board when football's bad because ultimately, whilst it is a results business, it is an entertainment sport and fans will always want both. But when you can't have both, they tend to want entertainment I think. Um, So we're going to focus on Scott Parker this episode and have a quick chat about where we think he is Um, and Adam I'm going to come to you first just because we've not had you on for a while and I want to hear you because you know we miss you. Um, I guess my first overriding question to kick us off is Scott Parker sackable? I think he is. Um, I think the noises that a bit of the fan base are making at the moment are valid in part. Um, I think the one of the things that and, and I am not on that side of the argument at all, but I think one of the one of the things that they could look at, uh, like you said um, in previous conversations, it's the perception, the very the owners are bothered about the perception of Burnley Football Club. And it's not just internally that we're getting uh, that we're being scrutinized externally, um, yeah. known championship experts 
who have been pretty fair, bang on the money so far. Um, I've been very critical of Scott Parker's methods and the way that Burnley are approaching this season. Uh, so I, I don't think they'll like the look that's being cast over the over the club. And I think they've probably set it up so if they did have a situation where they needed to get rid of the manager again, they weren't going to have um, the the team, the, sorry, the squad and and the coaching staff ripped apart by it. I think we'd yeah. built, ALK had built, seemed to have built the surroundings, whether it be the um, all the data analysts and his coaching staff were appointing assistant managers before we knew who the manager was yeah. in the summer. So I think it's a lot easier for them to get rid of him if they decide to because you know that you're not going to have a coil situation where you're just going to rip the heart out of a team um, or even company where he's got all the saying, quite a lot of everything and even uh, to an extent, obviously, Daesh, especially the previous ownership. Um, so I think he's sackable and I'm sure we'll come on to the reasons why I don't think we should sack him. Um, but yeah, I think the discussion is definitely a valid one. Excellent stuff. Okay, well let's 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 pull that up, Tom, because I think that is you know it's it's an absolute pro is Adam. I do love it when he comes on. His his little segues into the next question are always perfect. The very next question that we had on our list today is fine. If he is sackable, should Burnley sack him? Like, is that a thing? Is that where we want to go down? I find it a really difficult one to answer. To be honest, I think if you'd have asked me a couple of weeks ago, I'd have been like, let's give him a bit of time. Let's give him the season. Um, the league position wasn't horrendous. We're not. It's not as if we're getting pasted every week. We're in games every week. We're probably in more games than we need. We we'll probably make it a bit easier for a team to be in the game against us than than it needs to be. But that's another conversation. Um, so it's not like disastrous. And I think if it was a sack in, if we sacked him tomorrow, they'd get fans of every other club going. You're the fourth in the league. They've been the last two games all season. They sold all these best players in the summer. What are they expecting? And exactly. they'd all be valid points. I think. I think the only the only thing is uh, we've got to watch it every week, and it and it's just I'm getting to the point now where I'm thinking, you know, at the start of the season I was thinking, you know, give him a chance to sell all his players. That the, the replacements aren't as good as what was let go, certainly not as good as what we had two years ago. But I'm getting to the point now where I'm thinking this is just how he wants to play. This isn't going to yeah. improve. I think we're getting worse, if anything. Um, I went to Millwall. That was the worst we've been since the Sunderland game. Um, that was just a dreadful day out. I went to West Brom. I thought we were better. And then on Sunday against Swansea, I thought we were worse again. Um, we yeah, were. Yeah, we were bad. Yeah, we were. And it's it's one thing to say, oh, look, you're fourth. You know that you're not losing games. You're in. You're in games. You don't concede goals. It's great. But but to me, it's the the, the main thing I'm thinking about at the minute is, do I want to go and watch it every week? Do I want to pay to watch it? No, I don't. I don't enjoy it in the slightest. To be honest, the I don't know get the warts or not. You know, I don't really want to watch it all season. So if it's a case where the board think, well, it's going to get us up, therefore let's keep them in charge, great. But will I be, I mean, I've only missed one game so far this season, but will I, will I be going to that many come the end of the season? I very much doubt it because I'm, I'm just not enjoying it, to be honest. Yeah. And that's a consistent message that we're hearing from a lot of fans. Like most people, are, like when I go on, when I went to the Swansea game, we all sort of got to our seats. And I, like most of us had, I've, I've been with the same people we sit with for 20 years. You know, it's like we've seen, you know, it's our little family. The season tickets are all the same. I've seen kids grow up and, and become adults and have their own kids. You know, that's the family that we have there. And we got on on Sunday and everybody just kind of looked at each other and just went, <sighs> You know, like, and it's just, everybody's just got that eye contact acknowledgement. It's like, I did not want to come on to this. And then, you know, you're at home and it's 94 minutes and it's still nil-nil and we've not had any meaningful chances of trying to score a goal. It's just a really hard way. And it's, and a lot of us travel a long way. Um, I think in team none and ever, I think there's only, I think there's only one two of you who actually live in Burnley. The rest of us live miles away. So we do trek a long way to come and watch it. So it's really, really tough. Um, and it does it does put pressure on boards, as I said at the, the outs, outset of the podcast. It puts pressure on boards when the football's really bad. Um, so I guess from that perspective, Adam, like 
what is Parker's pressure point this season? Like, what is the, if it's not now in this international break, which clearly isn't because he's still in a job. And, and actually he was on Sky Sports News for those of you who, who saw it at lunchtime. And he does talk a good talk. You know, like I, I found myself listening to him for 10 minutes and then just buying into it um, for ages. And, and and then I'm just like, I'm back on Team Parker again. And then you watch another 45 minutes and you're off it again. Um, so there is, there's definitely a PR job being done in the press um so he's not been sacked now so for you adam what is his pressure point like is it we're miles off the pace by christmas is it another three nil nils and we fall out the top six and he goes like at what point do you think the board will say right this is our trigger point now it's, it's a difficult one because you've if you stick by him now i think you've you probably are waiting until maybe that january January window and and I don't know how active we'll be but um, I think obviously in the attacking area you'd hope we will be and sorry can I just pause you on that point then actually Adam yeah. just, that's a really good point on that interview we did with Sky Sports News earlier on today he was asked he was asked that specific question by Jackie in the studio she really pressed him on that and said no you're not you have lost all these people you are saying it's a work in progress are you happy can we expect investment in in January and he gave such a politician's answer. He faded the question like you wouldn't believe. So I don't know whether we're going to sign it or not. So sorry, I wanted to feed that in. Yeah, yeah. no, no, that's, yeah, I, I've not seen that interview yet. So it's, it's good context. But I just, I don't see what the board would have expected from, from Scott Parker, given what we've seen with him at Bournemouth and Fulham. And obviously he's had that firepower to get him, um, get him the goals that we clearly don't have. But you can, this style of football has been his, well, it, it's stamped all over his teams. Um, so given the, point, the points total that we're on at the moment, I'd have taken, given the turmoil at the end of the transfer window. Yeah. I don't think he'll have been happy with it. He's probably had to be quite the politician. You could see how angry he was at the end of that window, or at least a few days before the end anyway. Um, so for me, I, I, don't I don't think they should be surprised by what's what's happening. They knew what they were doing. Well, they should have known what they were doing with the with the appointment. I, I don't know when that pressure point is, and whether when we get there, it would be too late because my and it's one for probably another day. But if we don't get promoted, then I think that's this season. I think that that obviously leads to much bigger uh, much bigger problems down the line. Um, I'm quite loyal as a as a as a fan, probably to my own detriment. I wasn't in the company out camp at any point last season, uh, which I know Tom was quite early on, and and yourself. Um, <laughs> and you guys were obviously proven right. I were thinking, well, given last season, who the heck would we want to take us back up? Um, and I don't think I'm ever in That's the die shout camp either. So it's, I, I think it might be just my personality that I would stick naturally stick with with him for yeah. as long as possible but if, if we do drop away from playoff contention then what is the use in the in the football that that we're playing but for me given oh that's a really quality, good point actually that's given, really yeah yeah given the quality of the league this season with quite big teams going up last year or chef united and luton coming down chef united will look decent but i don't think there's anything to be scared of at, at the top end of no, the league. I can't I see us not being in at least playoff contention, even with what we've got, which is why I think January is probably pivotal um, for whether we are aiming for the playoffs or aiming for the top two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd say if we dropped away from the playoffs, then in answer to, to your question, that's probably. I know. I think that's probably right. Break. Yeah, I know. I, th I think you're right there, and I think I think that's that is such a valid point that one not thought of. It's like we had this with with Dash, and this is a problem that Everton fans have got with them at the moment, in that you can put up with terrible football if it brings results and it gets you what you need to do, which is why Dash ball was tolerated so much. We knew it wasn't great. Yeah, it got even worse towards the end, but we knew it wasn't great football, and Everton fans know this now. But when that terrible football is also not bringing you the results, i.e. what Everton are feeling this season and what we're seeing this season... That's a double whammy. Like fans will just get on your back very, very quickly. So yeah, you're absolutely right. If if the, if it's not results orientated and it doesn't get us one nil wins every single week and gets us the championship, then what is the point? We're, we're playing terrible football and it's not bringing us anything. Um. So yeah, yeah, I agree with that. No, they never
Um, Tom, heading back to you then, obviously, we think we're probably looking at Christmas as being, um, I think that's where Adam had got to, we're probably looking at Christmas being a, a, a real pressure point for, for Park, and he will know that as well, by the way. Um, Adam raised a really interesting question there. It's like, what, what are the aims for this season? I guess that's the next point that I wanted to look at, in that what is the expectation from the board this season? Like, are we in a financial position or a brand position awareness position that we don't have to worry about promotion this season and if that's the case then he's probably not going to get sacked at any season like at any point this season like what what do we think his minimum expectation is i think it's quite interesting that when company was appointed there was a lot of talk about how we weren't desperate to help the first year it the second year was fine obviously it ended up being a, a, a straight bounce back but all the talk then was like, there's no pressure to go up this year. I've not heard anyone say that at the club this year. No. Which suggests to me that there is a bit of pressure to get back up this year. Um, you know, ALK haven't bought a Premier League club to be sat mid-table in the Championship. And if we don't go back up in the next two, three years, then that's what they're going to have on their hands and they're going to make a loss on it. So uh, I, I would think that it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to either be this year or next year, then the parachute money runs out and then we just become... Stoke City, Blackburn Rovers, Middlesbrough, don't we? Where we're just in the table side, Ooh. hoping that we get a good manager in and, and they can put something together. So, yeah, it, it's a bit of a waste of the of the resources we've got. But that's not just Parker's fault. Obviously, I don't think he's getting the, the best out of the players that he's got. But what the board gave him, they have to look at themselves as well and say, well, if, if yeah. we don't look at it, how much of the fault lies with the manager? Obviously, the manager that they've hired, by the way. And how much of the fault lies with themselves? Because... If you know, if you've got a really great squad that's probably not sustainable to keep in the championship, you don't sell it all the week before the window shuts. Get a few half arse reflections in the last minute and expect to coast to promotion again. And I'm not sure whether they know that or not. <clears throat> Hopefully, if they didn't know it before, they do now. But the 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 only thing they can really do now is either roll the dice with the manager or back him heavily in in January. And I think either way, we're going to need. If they want to go up this year or next, we're going to need that investment in January. As Adam said, it's a weak league, you know. It's unbelievable that game against West Brom. Two really dour teams who are just happy to draw nil-nil every week. And they're both sat in the playoff places. I know. So, you know we're rubbish. We are terrible most weeks, aren't we? We're terrible to watch. I know we don't concede goals, but we very rarely look like scoring or breaking teams down. West Brom looked absolutely diabolical when we played them. And yet they're both, you know, top six teams. It just makes you think, you know, you just kick on in some of these games. It's a waste. Yeah, it does. It really does. And I'm not expecting, you know, people go, oh, you just want to watch them win 3 0 every week. Go watch Man City then. It's not that, is it? It's just you want to see it a bit more thrust. You know, it's that Mill game. It was as if we were, we were clinging on for a point. We were 1 0 down the old second half. There was just no urgency. Yeah. Swansea, you know, they look like they're happy. I mean, they, they get out of jail at the end with the penalty, but they look like they were. Not particularly asked if it, if it finished nil nil or, or not. So that 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 sort of stuff has got to be addressed. And I, you'd like to think that the owners are having those conversations with with Parker as well. But yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think it's yeah. I think we, we've talked about this before. It feels like it's a um, one off, one on kind of league as a championship. I think we've been really lucky, um, and this is not to take away from the achievements of our last promotion season but we've been quite lucky that we went down in a weaker division you know if you look at if you look at next season it's very likely that Leicester Southampton and uh, Ipswich will all come back down again Leicester might stay up um, but if Leicester stay up it's probably going to be at the expense of Wolves um, those are three horrendous sides to come back down to the championship. And it's every possibility that the three of them just go straight back up again the season after. So we're, this is our best chance this season to get out of the championship because it look, yeah. it's, the, it's the off season. You've only got to look at what happened last season in the championship with the three teams coming straight back up. And you had it switch out a freak season. Can you imagine if we were playing in that league? Yeah. With this team, we'd be about seventh now. We yeah, wouldn't we wouldn't have made the playoffs. It was, yeah, it was talking. Yeah, it really is. Um, Okay, so if, if we do get to the point where uh, we do part company, Adam, I think I think this is pro this first one's probably more of a question mark around the timings, and I suspect that the ship has sailed, and the fact that we haven't actually sacked Parker in the international break. Um, some names that have been banned, 
batted around as replacements for him. The most obvious one is the departure of Ruud van Nisselrooy from Old Trafford following Ten Hag's um, departure and their new manager coming in. Now, we all speculated that, that well, the rumours were in the summer that Van Nisselrooy had been lined up and had signed terms to take over as Burnley's manager. That was really strongly reported in the press. He then gave backward when the man who was offered the assistant manager's job at United. We assumed on the presumption from him that Ten Hag was going to get sacked pretty quickly and he would just step in as assistant manager and get the job on a caretaker basis, prove himself and get it. And it's a it's a very um, fast track appointment to the United manager. That hasn't worked. He's found himself departing Old Trafford. There are some suggestions and there's some calls in the press and amongst fans that we sack Parker now and go back to plan A, which was Ruud van Nisselrooy. Discuss. Yeah, I think in the summer he was probably the most interesting name amongst amongst the candidates, um, and I'd have been quite happy if he'd have, if he'd have got the job at that point. Um, but I just think you're taking a very very big risk on someone who hasn't got the experience in the championship, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. Like our last uh, manager in the championship came in and did obviously very well. Um, but I think with the squad we've got now and the football we've been playing for the first few months, if he just came in and went, oh, we're going to swashbuckle our way to the title, I don't, I don't know how that would, would work. That's a great word, swashbuckle our way to the title. <laughs> I, might, I might make that our podcast episode, Burnley swashbuckling. Sorry, carry on. I, 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 I that, that was exceptional language. Well, and, and uh, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't go down this road, but I've always just slightly haunted with these last few weeks of conversations by what happened at Birmingham last season. Um, and it's a completely different set of scenarios. They've been down down in the bottom half of the championship for a while, but get rid, getting rid of Eustace when they were fifth and bringing in Rooney for uh, like the big name, um, yeah. more attacking football, and they ended up relegated. Obviously, they might come back next year, obviously, with, with the investment they've had. Um, so I think I think Van Van Nistelrooy would be too much of a risk. I think Robbins is probably the more interesting yes. candidate that, well, he, um, he, that I think more fans could probably see happening. And he's done obviously did a brilliant job at Coventry, um, taking him from League Two to uh, penalty kicks away from the Premier League. Uh, and again, if he was available in the summer, I think that he'd have been definitely up there, if not the number one target. Um, still, with someone like Robbins, you'd think he'd probably want to bring his own people in. So it's probably a bigger turnover. He'd probably want more control. Um, and a lot's been made of the Coventry lost the assistant. I think it was assistant Ali Viviash or in the summer. And people are putting that down to, um, well, Coventry's poor start to the season, the same is an impact of him losing his assistant manager oh that's interesting um, we had a wait. similar thing do you remember when um so dice Lachlan. lost his yeah, yeah, that, Lachlan, that's yeah. When we started going yeah, back, a good, good example mm. that yeah so I, again i think it's too given the position we're in at the moment i'm very much still on the parker in um <laughs> side of the argument i can see i can see why yeah i can see why i'd throw uh van nisseroy and robbins into the mix uh but again, I just think it'd cause too much upheaval when we've actually got a decent and decent point total. And like Tom said, I don't think Parker at this moment in time, even though they may be able to get more definitely more attacking um, uh, results out of the players, I just don't think it's worth the risk. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so, Tom, obviously he has already mentioned Mark Robbins. I think it's probably fair to say that Van der Soy is also an unknown um, entity as well in terms of his managerial style. He hasn't really got the, you know, and I'm, I spoke to a United friend of mine who said he did, wasn't sure what he'd actually changed at United. I know he's obviously a caretaker manager. So we've got some element of unknown there. So let's park Van der Soy for now. Um, obviously, Adam's already talked about Mark Robbins. Um Mark Robbins is being touted for every job, by the way. One of the favourites at the moment is that Cardiff City are looking to to pot their manager and bring him in. Um, but again, yeah, we, we know that that's there. Another interesting one from our perspective, it hasn't happened yet, but it is expected to happen imminently. We are expecting to hear Rob Edwards lose his job at Luton before long. 
Is that something that you would consider? I think probably in the same situation with Rob Edwards, to be honest, I think football is quite attritional. It's quite dice like I don't know if it's something that necessarily fits the group of players we've got. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it would have been better to have had Rob Edwards in the Premier League last year. Well, as we saw, obviously, he made a better fist of it than, than company did. Um, I think he's I could have done a better job in company <laughs> did last year, and I'm rubbish. <laughs> if you, if, as Adam knows from my FPL performance this season. But anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> And then, well, quite, yeah. But it, 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 I think it's, it's a funny thing with Parker, actually. I think if by some miracle he does get us up, I think it will be better in the Premier League to play yes. this kind of style. Yeah, um, I agree. We set up, it's a bit like um, Southgate at the Euro setting up like for a nil nil draw against Slovenia in the groups. And it's like, why are you doing that when your players are much better? Which, which that should be our position in this league when we've got a much better budget. But if you set up like that against Premier League teams, then we probably have done better than we did with company last year. So, uh, yeah, I think for me, Edwards would be more someone that I'd be looking for in that kind of role. I don't, I, I don't necessarily see us suddenly playing free flowing football only three mil every week if he became the yeah, manager. Yeah. And, and to be honest, even all the ones you've mentioned, like you said, Van Nistelrooy is a bit of a risk. I feel he didn't play the best football at Feyenoord, and then Robbins. You know, in the summer, and he said Adam Robbins would have been right up there on the list if he was available in the summer. But then a lot of people would have said to you, well. Uh, you know, he's lost a playoff final. But Parker's got two promotions from two seasons in this league. So maybe even then Parker would have been the better candidate on paper. I know he did a brilliant job at Coventry. And, and I kind of feel like if, if if it was announced tomorrow that Parker had gone and Robbins had come in, I'd probably be a bit more excited about the rest of the season than I am now. But I can understand why, it's, you know, that wouldn't happen. And I can understand why we'd stick with Parker. And I, to me, there's not a, a massive obvious standout candidate that I wish we'd go and get to replace him. So I'm, I wouldn't say I was 100% Parker in, but at the same time, I'm not 100% Parker out either. Yeah, no. It's quite interesting, really, of course, because I think that the, the biggest um, comparison that's being done at the moment is that when, you know, Parker does have a, a fantastic record in the championship, but there's a really obvious distinction between the two sides he got promoted and ours. In both his Fulham and Bournemouth sides, he had a very prolific ruthless championship striker at his books we don't look number one we don't have that and the strikers that we do have look absolutely terrible so surely if we keep surely that the biggest thing that Parker will be looking for if we do keep him for the rest of the season and the reason the justification for doing that is because of his championship promotion credentials you have to buy him or at least get him on loan a prolific championship striker in January otherwise his football's ineffective right yeah, I would say so. And I would, I would imagine that he, he was having those conversations in the summer as well, you know. Uh, and if they shifted some of these players out a little bit quicker, then perhaps we would have been able to do that kind of business. But we ended up having to do it all in the last week of the window. And, yeah, you know, that's why we are where we are. But by the same token, I think, I, I do think it's he's got the excuse of, of not having the best squad. But with what he's got, we should be doing a lot better. Yeah, and a we lot should be doing better. I know he doesn't rate town Todger, but I don't know if he's really had a chance. I think the same with Rodriguez. I think his legs have gone he a bit, but terrible. they don't get enough minutes. They don't get enough minutes for me. No. Like, uh, was it West Brom? Or West Brom, I think it was away. Nil-nil, you know, the game's there to be won. West Brom aren't even trying to get out their own half most of the time. And I think out of them two, Rodriguez and town Todger, they've got like five minutes between them. Yeah, that's fair. You know, so, yeah, I, I, yeah I, it does make me wonder, you know, if he did have a brilliant prolific strike you know he fell out of Mitrovic didn't he at Fulham and stopped playing him a lot of the time in the Premier League so I don't know yeah, if that would be a chance here but. yeah it's an interesting one um so taking all of that into consideration Adam we've got Bristol City coming up this weekend the international break is done um there's everybody's fed up they're fed up of watching it there's been audible boos leaving Turf Moor People are entitled to do that. Um, sometimes it's just a, a very easy and quick way to vent frustration. It's not necessarily, and I don't necessarily always agree with it, but it serves a, a multiple of purposes, I think. Um, what does Parker need to do at the weekend to get us on side and to get us firing again? I think there's there's been, even though you say, Tom, about the Swansea game being um, very poor, and obviously it was, and um, we've managed to get the win, and you can see the togetherness in the team and the fighting spirit. And it is good to see the fight in the team after last season. And and the team have some men, like proper men, and we're competing in games. Uh, but yeah, it is the quality in it. And you, you, you want to see us 
looking to be proactive with the changes at the top end of the pitch. And what I was going to say, sorry, is in the last two games, at least he's brought Sami Ento into the into the ten role and played yeah, true. The more attacking three in midfield. So that was a sl- like it's what everyone were calling for because the Brownhill Cullen um, Hannibal trio wasn't working. Even when Laurent were playing, was still he was a bright spark, but wasn't um, was still not creating anything. Um, I think, like Tom said, I'd like to see. Tonji or Rodriguez get more minutes with Fleming or when Foster comes yeah. back then to see them two playing together. Neither have got great goal records recently, but you just want to see the him trying to get the best out of what he's got. And with Cl- Cullen and Brownhill, we've seen how brilliant they've been in the championship under um under company the last time. I think it just shows how important a system system is for some players. Cullen were a standout, uh, well, out of men. You can't really say many standouts, but he was a standout performer last time. Um, and he just doesn't look the same in this system. You, no, in doesn't. a lot of games, you don't need him to be there. And you may be wondering whether the legs of Laurent and um, and Hannibal would work better than them two. But it, it's it's a difficult... I'd, I'd, I'd like to see, um, yeah, just some just mix it up at the top end and play... Uh, play the two up front. If not from the start, then from 60, 65 minutes, yeah. if, not, if it's not going to plan. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, is he capable of it, Tom? Let's give the final word to you for wrap up this podcast. Is he capable of doing what he needs to do or are we grounding with a stubborn style that ain't going to change? Well, this is what worries me. You know, at the start of the season, I was thinking, well, he's had to throw a team together when he had the players. We you know we're winning 4 on 5 nil, but the more it's gone on, the more I think this is what he wants to do. This is what he thinks is a good way of playing. And this is what we're going to see all season. So, no, it, I don't think he is capable of it. And I think what you said earlier really rings true. You know, people will put with it as long as you're winning. But we, was it a four-game win the strong we had before the Swansea game? He ain't going to get too many more of them. Okay, good stuff. Well, listeners, let's wrap it up there. Um, we have given you our thoughts. What do you think? Um do drop us a comment in the section below. And while you're at it, do subscribe, please. It does help the channel grow. Um, turn on notifications so you don't miss an episode. And those of you who are listening on our podcast um, channels, do click subscribe on your favourite podcast provider. But more importantly, let us know in the comment section or via social media what you think. Is Scott Parker on borrowed time? Do we need to give him the time and the players to improve this? Or do we need to take drastic action to save what ch- should be a promotion-winning season for Burnley Football Club. We will be back this weekend with a preview show ahead of this weekend's fixture at Bristol City. Um, And then we'll be back next week, hopefully giving you some better news on a great performance from the Mighty Clarets. I've been Natalie Bromley. This has been the Known and Ever podcast. Until next time. The Known and Ever podcast is brought to you in association with the TalkSport Fan Network. Our host and editor is Natalie Bromley and the show is produced by Matt Moss. Our resident statistician is Dave Roberts and our FPL expert is Adam Dennett. The analysis show team is collectively Tom Whitaker, Rich Steele, George Poole, Charlotte Rigby and Adam Dennett. Our music is provided by George Gaskell and our newsletter team is headed up by Jamie Smith. If you don't already, you can subscribe to our newsletter by visiting noneenever.substack.com. Thanks as ever go to our partners Talk Sport. We are proud to be associated with the Talk Sport Fan Network.